This video will follow the path one red blood cell takes as it travels through the double circulatory system of the human body. The heart is split in the middle so that the blood in the right side of the heart does not mix with the blood in the left side of the heart. The right side only has deoxygenated blood which contains red blood cells that have dropped off oxygen to cells in the body and now need to pick up more oxygen in the lungs, specifically the alveoli. The left side of the heart only holds oxygenated blood, which is red blood cells that have just come from the lungs, specifically the alveoli, and now need to deliver the oxygen to the cells in our bodies. The double circulatory system refers to two systems. One system for the lungs, where red blood cells need to perform gas exchange with the inhaled atmosphere. The biological term for this circuit is the pulmonary circuit. The second system is for the organs and the body, where oxygenated blood is delivered to the cells and organs, and deoxygenated blood is returned to the heart. The biological term for this system is the systemic circuit. Let us take a red blood cell that is deoxygenated and has just come from the tip of your finger and needs to get back to the lungs to pick up more oxygen. In this diagram, any vessels that are blue carry deoxygenated blood and any red vessels carry oxygenated blood. So the red blood cell travels through the vena cava, which is the largest vein in our body, and into the right atrium. The right atrium walls will then contract and force blood into the right ventricle. The right ventricle walls will then contract, forcing blood up the pulmonary artery. Remember, all arteries carry blood away from the heart, and the name artery has nothing to do with whether they are carrying oxygenated blood or not. The tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle stops the blood from flowing back into the right atrium. Valves stop backflow, meaning they only let blood travel in one direction. The tricuspid valve shape means that when the blood pushes against the flaps, they shut and close the path between the right atrium and right ventricle. The same is true of the semilunar valve of the pulmonary artery. It stops the backflow of blood so that all the blood from the right ventricle travels up the pulmonary artery where it splits to either the right or left lung. Once the red blood cell has picked up some more oxygen, it returns to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary vein. Remember that all veins take blood back to the heart and again has nothing to do whether it's deoxygenated or not. The pulmonary vein takes blood into the left atrium. The pulmonary circuit is now complete. The left atrium walls then contract to force blood into the left ventricle. The left ventricle walls will then contract to force blood up the aorta to the rest of the body. Please note that the left ventricle walls are much thicker than the right ventricle walls. This is because the left ventricle must apply more pressure to the blood because the blood must travel further to the far reaches of the body, like the head and limbs, for example. The right ventricle only must pump blood to the lungs, so the right ventricle does not need to produce as much pressure, hence the thinner walls. When the left ventricle contracts, the blood cannot flow back into the left atrium because the bicuspid valve flaps close shut, preventing backflow. The same is true of the semilunar valve in the aorta. It will flap shut as well if any blood tries to flow back into the left ventricle. The red blood cell will now deliver the oxygen to the organs and cells and finally return to the vena cava. The systemic circuit is now complete and we can also say the red blood cell has completed its journey of the double circulatory system of the body. In the next lesson we will look at arteries, veins and capillaries in more detail.